Well, hi YouTube, Brian James, that Micro Four Thirds guy with you once again. And in this video, I'm going to be giving my opinion on what I think about the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I've done a few videos using it already, so um, this isn't the first time out of the box. This is actually a little bit of a, re a review as to how I've got on with it. But also, I'm doing a dual review on this one, because uh, when I got in touch with... When I got this DJI, I got in touch with Kent Faith, who got me... Uh, a lot of products in the past which I've tested for them and when I was in Cyprus recently I tested some of their filters there's a, a link above to that and I was really impressed with them for the price for the quality um, the whole nine yards so when I got the DJI I noticed that they also did magnetic filters for the the pocket 3 so I reached out to, to them and uh, very kindly they've uh, they sent me a set through now basically all I said to them was I'm interested in trying them. Um, would you like me to give a little, a little bit of opinion on how I find them? And they said, yes, please. Give them no, speculation, uh, no stipulation as to what I say. So uh, anything I say here is, uh, is my opinion. But I'm putting it down as a sponsored video because they've actually given me these lenses to try. Well, I'm really impressed with it. So let's stick to the, the Pocket 3 for the moment. And uh, I'm in the middle of Carlisle here, outside the fabulous uh, the cathedral. I'll just swing around. And I'll let you have a quick look up the cathedral as I do. Have a look at this. Isn't that a fabulous building? Unfortunately, a bit of scaffolding and, and things around at the moment. There's a lot of changes happening in Carlisle. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about the Osmo Pocket 3 first. I'm really impressed with it. It's light, it's adaptable, it's easy. It does everything I really wanted it to do. Sometimes the 20 mm equivalent lens can be a little bit on the wide side. And there's actually an extra wide adapter for it as well, which is a magnetic um, second lens which clicks on. Now this was the combo pack that I've got. Um, sorry, that second lens ticks to about 15 mm I better tell you that. Now, this is a combo pack that I bought, so it's got a few extras in it. Um, an extra battery, although it has an internal battery, it has a, a, um, a little plug into the bottom battery pack, which I usually leave on because it makes it that little bit easier to carry. Um, comes with a carry case, it comes with um, a few bits and pieces, a little tripod, all sorts of things, and of course, um, USB-C cables. The the camera's just easy to use. It's so easy. I've always been at that point in the past where I've had to, um, I've had to mess around putting cameras onto gimbals or um, having to actually worry about lenses and how I was going to put them all up together. Worrying about microphones. Now, one of the things I didn't tell you in the combo pack is this: the microphone. It comes with a, a DJI um, Mic 2. And this is a, a Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi mic, I think it's both. And this will actually connect onto the, the Osmo without having to have a receiver. You just plug it, you just switch it on, automatically pairs up with it, it's great. Comes with a little dead kitten on the front. Not a dead cat, a dead kitten. Can you see that? Because I've got the auto lock on, which I'll tell you about in a second. But um, a wheel windshield. And unlike the road windshields, windshields, which don't seem to be very easily attached, it's tiny little catches. These ones have a long stem which goes into the external microphone socket because yes, on the DJI Mic 2, you can actually um, you can put a, an external mic in, a, a Lavalier mic for instance, which makes it nice and easy, like you can on the roads, but this one, the dead cat goes into there and it's a really good cover. The Osmo Pocket 3 has three built-in mics as well, two on the side and one the, the back from me, the opposite side from where I am and they give a nice all-round sound and you can select them individually as to which one you want I'm going to take a little sit down and as I'm telling you this so uh, yeah you can choose which microphone you want and if you use the DJI Mic 2 it'll automatically disable the internal mics now you'll see that there's a lot of sunshine around here and what I've found is and I'm taking other people's advice set the exposure to about minus three on the exposure compensation it does tend to burn out the skies blow out the skies now also i've got one of the fantastic little kent faith um nd filters on this is a very little nd filter um from 2 to 32 um times 
um, reduction. There's also another one in the same pack because this was a double pack that they sent me through with two variable ND filters in, 2 to 32 and 32 to 512. And um, this just nicely controls the light a little bit. It's much easier to, to, um, to use it. And also on these Kent Faith filters, one of the things I'm really impressed with, really impressed with, is that they are so thin that it will allow the, the camera, when you switch it off, to go into the park position. The camera head will actually turn around and protect itself, but you don't have to take the filter off on this one. Some of the other magnetic filters, including the 15mm uh, lens adapter, you've got to take it off because it won't go store properly. Also, it's because it's so small and so light, it has a negligible effect on the, on the gimbal, so you're not really putting any extra strain on the, the, uh, the gimbal motors, which is useful. Well, so what else uh, about the, the camera? I'm not going to get the specs up here. The, I'm not going to go through full spec list, but I did get a couple of specs together. Uh, price for the combo was £620 um, UK, and I got these from just down the road at, um, at Wilkinson's. Again, this video is sponsored, isn't sponsored by Wilkinson's, but um, I've just had so many good cameras from my local camera dealer that um, they deserve the, the thank you. So thanks very much to Joe in there, because he was the one who I discussed with about. The beauty of this is it actually has a one-inch sensor. Although it's a tiny little camera, very small, it's got a one-inch sensor in. Um, it'll do 4K 60 max visual resolution. Um, it has a three-axis gimbal, two-inch touchscreen, which I'm looking at at the moment, uh, and very effective touchscreen too. Uh, the size is 121.9 by 36.9 by 28.6 millimeters, so tiny. And the weight, uh, well, 116 grams for the camera itself. If you put the battery pack onto the bottom, which uh, charges the internal battery, but also retains its own charge, it's 179 grams. So including the external battery, 179 grams. And it's a 1300 milliamp hour battery. The beauty, as I say, you can just plug the, uh, either the external battery or the, um, the Osmo Pocket 3 straight into a USB po power source, either from a car or a battery bank or whatever, and that will give you the fantastic ability to actually charge it up on the move. Now, I'm deliberately putting this into a bad lighting situation. You should never have the sun directly behind you when you've got a camera, but you can see it's coping really, really well. Now, there's a lot of traffic noise around me with this building works, and I'll be interested to see what the sound's like on this, but I'm using the, the Mic 2 at the moment, and what I've experienced on that, it, 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 on most of this, it's really been resistant to external sounds. It's also, if you look down, um, I'll just pull myself down a little bit, you'll see that the, that the Mic 2 is uh, it's sideways on, and it's pointing towards those vehicles. So I don't know how well that's going to do, but uh, we shall see. Now I said it's got auto track, which I think is a fabulous feature. So basically all I have to do for that is just double click my face, sorry, triple click my face on the screen, and the camera will automatically track wherever my face is. And if I go out the shot altogether, if I can get it to go out the shot altogether, it's really being, it's tracking too well. I've got the camera spun around almost 360 degrees. There we are. It's out of its end points. If I bring it back in again, it picks up the tracking straight onto me which is not easy, especially in the strange light behind that I've got. If I want to get myself um, anything other than centre on the screen, which I am at the moment, what I need to do is I need to undo the, the, the tracking, uh, pull the gimbal across to where I want. So if I want myself at the side of the screen, take myself off with the joystick and put myself on there, the auto tracking. And there we are. And that will now auto track me into the left of the screen, or the right of the screen, whichever way it's coming out for you at the moment. Personally, I quite like the centre, but that's not the point. So there we are. Now, one of the things that I've got disillusioned with, with other cameras and things in the past when I've been trying to do these vlog-type shots, well, the G100 that I've used for a long time, the Lumix G100, is a fabulous little camera, but it doesn't have stability built in unless you use a digital stabiliser. And when you use a digital stabiliser, it crops in heavily, really, really heavily. So you're having to use something like a 7 or 8 millimetre lens with all its associated distortions before you can get a good picture out of it. Also, if you want to do anything, there is, it is a small light camera, but it's still a weight issue. You've got to carry a tripod around and things, which you don't have to do with this on. The tripod just so you can hold it properly. The beauty with this is the camera itself is tiny. It's tiny in weight, but it's got everything on. I don't have to put anything onto a separate gimbal. If you remember, I've got a... Um, I, tried out a, a giant um, Weeble S with my G9, which is fabulous. 
it was too big a gimbal to be able to use properly on my um, G100 though. So I had to be used, using a heavy camera. It's big, it's ungainly, and it had to be balanced out before you could use it. This thing is straight out of the pocket. It's not just a camera, it is the gimbal as well as the camera, so you've got the best of both worlds. You're not having to mount the camera on or align it up, it's there. You can get it to, to reset itself properly, but that's, you know, that takes seconds. But I haven't had to do that. It's kept itself from, it's uh, leveled off all the time since I actually did the very first setup on it. And the setup took seconds. As I say, the advantage for me on this is it's easy. It's straight out of the pocket. It will fit in the pocket. And to be honest with you, I've wandered around Carlisle. If you remember, I had a, a video where I had some problems in Carlisle. But this thing is so discreet that people actually don't even know you're doing it. Don't know, you know that you're, you're taking video at all. And also it has a stills mode. Obviously you can't do anything other than a digital zoom on this. But it has a stills mode, which allows you to take still photographs on this and store it. Storage is by a micro SD card, which goes into the side. Um, and that's nice and easy. I believe there's also, a, well, there is an ability to actually save a second sound file if you want to keep sound separately from your main video. And also, even this, the DJI um, Mic 2 has the ability, I think it's 8 gigabytes. I think it's 8 gigabytes of um, audio that you can actually store inside the mic. So you can use it as a standalone device. But also, I don't know if you, but I've actually had things where I've, I've forgotten to actually connect microphones or switch a receiver on or even plug it in. Well, so long as you've got this, there's a record button on the side of the mic and you can instantly do audio recording straight into the mic so you get a belt and braces. You can actually also get it so that it's synced, it's in the menus, and menus are all done by touchscreen. You can actually get it so that you can have synced audio, so as you start pressing record on the camera, it'll tell the external microphone to also start recording on itself. It's fabulous, it's everything that you want is there together. A little bit of lens flare there. Now, you've seen me do some of the walk-arounds to 10B in Pendine Sands, so you don't need to see what it's capable of, it's capable of great stuff. What I did have on one of those, the 10B1, was a great deal of wind noise. I found that there's actually built-in wind noise um, correction. And there's also built-in uh, the ability to switch individual mics on and off. So I could have actually done a far better job. I had all three internal mics on and no external mic. So even that video could have been an awful lot better. One of the things I did find was that the audio was particularly low level. And if you go into the settings on the audio output, you'll find that the gain is set to zero. Um, as default. I've boosted up to about 10 and that's brought me in line with what I've been getting on my other video but it was something I had to do separately. As I say a few people have said about um, dropping the exposure of um, a compensation down by a third of a stop to stop some of the burn through and I actually totally agree with that one. But as I say you can use filters as well and I'm using the ND, th the ND 2 to 30, uh, 2 to 32 on here from KNF Concept. That's the one that was on the thumbnail on the screen. But they also very, very kindly sent me a set of filters through, uh, which are ideal as well, six filters. And they are fixed ND filters, so they're a fixed reduction. However, each one has a variable circular polarizer in. Also in that there's a, a UV, UV, UV filter and a circular polarizer on its own. So from those, that big set is under £100, the, uh, the twin ND, twin variable ND set, I think is about £30, something like that in the UK. So very, very inexpensive. The quality of them are equally as good as I expected it to be after the review that I did in uh, Cyprus of the, the, the main camera's filters. Try them out, they really are good. They come in wonderful little carry boxes, which I think you've seen on the screen already. Um, the hardest part of them actually is getting them in and out without getting fingerprints all of them. But they've even thought of that because they actually supply um, lint-free cleaning cloth for the filters, as well as, in both packs, um, supplying a, a screen protector for the 2-inch screen on Osmo 3. Really, really well thought out. Now, if you're interested in any of the KNF concept stuff, not just the filters, but the tripods, anything like that, you'll find, if you look at my description below, that there is a, an affiliate link. I do make a little bit of money out of that towards the channel, but it doesn't cost you any more. So if you go through that affiliate link, anything you buy from the KNF concept site, um, Kent Faith site, you will find that um, it has the same effect, and I'll get a small amount of commission in the channel, which keeps the channel going well. The other thing is, while you're down there looking in the description, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button to help spread this channel to more and more people. And if you want to support the channel, there is a, um, uh, a Patreon link and as well as a buy me a coffee link. 
below in the description. All of those you can do which will help the channel immensely. And if you're a Patreon patron, there's extra videos. You, what you won't have seen, because if you're not a Patreon patron, is when I went to Pendine, I got extra footage and that's only going to be available to level two patrons. So get yourself down, get yourself signed up as a patron and see extra footage or footage sooner than the rest of the people see them. However, back to the Osmo Pocket 3. What do I think of it overall? Well, as I say, overall, I can't find fault at all. It's the battery life is fabulous. The operation is so easy. There's only two buttons. One's a joystick with a push button in the center. And the other one is the record stop start. So you couldn't ask for anything easier than that. One of the things I really like, I tried using a DJI gimbal with my iPhone and the gimbal works fine. That's the Osmo 5. The problem with the iPhone is I couldn't switch between seeing me as a selfie shot and seeing forward without stopping the camera. Well, on this wing, if I triple uh, tap the joystick, you go straight into the normal view mode. And as I say, this is all gimbaled. You can change the gimbal to different styles. So that's nice and easy. And if I double, tr sorry, triple click it again, the head spins around and I can get myself back in line and triple tap it on my face and it's got the active track enabled. It has a D-Log colour setting as well, so if you want to do colour matching to other cameras, set them on the D-Log and you can do all the colour grading on this in a way that you would any other camera. So if you want to do slow motion shot, you can. It's also got the ability to do the, the sort of standard gimbal thing with the twisting head um, stuff. So if you want to do any of those advancing sort of shots, then you can. As a creator's camera, this is fabulous. There's all sorts you can do with it. As a pure vlogging camera, it's superb as well. You don't have to use everything that's on here. But if you want to do some of the more creative stuff, you really can. By putting something like a, um, a monopod on the bottom, you can almost simulate drone shots because you can lift the whole thing up. If I was to uh, lock it onto um, to something, something just dropped a can. If I was to lock it onto to something and then start trying to lift it up, it would automatically track that item. So as you're lifting it up, it would carry on looking down as to what it is, and that can all be done by having a long monopod and just lifting the camera above your head. Now the problem with that is you can't see the little two in screen. That's not a problem because using the DJI MIMO software, it's available for telephones and for uh, for mobile phones and for um, tablets. It actually acts as a fantastic lifetime monitor. There is so little delay on this that it really is just about real time. You can keep on tracking it by looking on the phone or looking on your iPad. So even if you're doing one of those real high overhead shots, just connect it onto your phone, look at it in live view, you can control everything from there, you can move the head, everything from your telephone, but your camera could be sitting on top of a monopod 10 foot above your head if you wanted to. It really is that adaptable. So as I say, from the DJI Osmo 3, this is a major game changer for me. I've, it does everything I want to do. It, all the, the things which I've said in previous videos about cameras that I want them to do something, but they can't do this on that particular setup. But the other setup does do this. This has everything in one box, everything's small. It's tiny. In fact, I actually use the, the battery extension purely for the fact that it's too small for my hands. So I put the extended battery on. It's tiny, it's wonderful, it's very, very neat. The biggest worry I had about it was it looked flimsy. The head is very exposed on the gimbal. It really is a small little head and it looked tiny. The construction is plastic. But when I got the camera and I started using it, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest dropping it. Start dropping it, you're gonna have problems. Um, so make sure you use the little wrist strap. But what I did find is when I started looking at the camera properly, the build quality is out of this world. It really is very, very self uh, reassuring that you're not gonna have problems with it. So that pretty much sums up my Osmo 3. As I say, if I look at the KNF concept filters, again, they were everything I said in the, the video, which I did in Cyprus. I don't know if I point to it or not, but if not, then it's up there, but you'll see it on the channel anyway. Uh, when I tested out the KNF um, concept filters for my Micro Four Thirds cameras, I was impressed with them. I was impressed with the quality of them at the time. And this thing impresses me even more. Now, one of the things I said at the very beginning was about the thinness of this, how it allows the head to close up properly. I think I might even have some video of it closing up with the, with the, um, the filter on. But to me, using the ND filter, 
it gives an awful lot more of a fluid movement if you're using if you're watching movement go past that control of the light really does make it so that you can smooth out movement if you've got hand movements or vehicles passing by it smooths it out an awful lot but also controls things like the backlight and it controls things like the, the clouds and how you get those and if you're using the, the CP filter as the circular polarizer again you've got all the advantages of that insofar as reflectivity and light control one word of warning and it is a strong word of warning and it's nothing to do with KNF uh, Ken Faith's filters as such uh, this applies to any circular polarizing filter so you're, you're not going to get a, a different thing by going to a different brand circular polarizers and wide angle lenses usually don't feel happy when you're getting them towards sunlight uh, and, and large open spaces and what I mean by this a circular polarizer works when the light is perpendicular to the direction of, uh, of view so for the CP to work properly I would need the sun either to my right or to my left from here with a wide angle lens though you're covering a huge amount of space and the sun can only be per perpendicular at one point so as you go away from that one point you'll find that all the rich blues and things which will blow, bring out the sun by polarizing the light if you know what polarizing the light means it means getting all the light um, waves in one direction so you don't have them conflicting directions it brings them all into one direction just lets them through if you've got a particularly wide aspect view of, of scenery where there's lots of sky and sunlight come through you'll find that you get patchiness so you'll have light blue sky and dark blue sky depending on the position of the circular, pol circular polarizer you, by moving the polarizer you'll see that this blueing will change as it goes across the screen there's nothing you can do about that because you've got such a wide angle lens and the way that a circular polarizer works so it's not the KNF concept filters it's science <laughs> it's the science so just be aware of that but if you're taking something where there's glass windows or um, reflections on ponds or lakes or sea anything like that the, cir <coughs> the circular polarizer can be a real lifesaver to be able to get a great shot and combined with the ND filter to control the amount of light coming through it really does make an adaptable set of uh, filters for the camera I have now started because my sister suggested doing this she uses um, the, the, these filters on her Osmo Pocket 3 just leave the smallest ND variable filter on uh, on the thing leave it fully open or pretty much fully open so it's on the two position and what that does is acts as a, a great lens protector for the camera itself because if you're going to knock it off they're, they're not silly tight magnets that you, so you have to put strain on but if you do knock the, the lens of the camera it'll be a filter which takes it which are considerably cheaper to replace but basically I'm just leaving this on almost as a, a permanent lens protector and it's working out really really well so thanks very much for watching this video um, I really hope that you enjoy it if you do get yourself an Osmo Pocket 3 this has been a revelation I've not used my G100 ever since I got this which is now a month ago um, I think if I was buying it again I would do the same things that happen I would buy the combo pack because with coming with this microphone with coming with the case uh, the extra battery all the things it really does make good value for money and it's not a huge amount more expensive as I say um, at what was it um, 620 I've had it before but basically um, at that price this really is a, a do-everything camera um, it has limitations it's not waterproof so be careful don't take it out in the rain it'll maybe have a little bit of a splash on it but I wouldn't do any more than that but um, apart from that it's absolutely fa fabulous the other thing I didn't mention though it will do vertical aspects so if you're doing short videos for say TikTok or um, YouTube shorts you can record it's not a full 4k it, it maxes out about three about 3k in the vertical aspect because it crops down the normal picture um, but you can do that and you can just flip the screen around so you can even see it in that format but that's in, built in as well so till the next time this is Brian James that micro four thirds guy saying bye bye keep enjoying your photography and I'll see you soon <laughs>